Uh, I'll tell you guys is that uh, in certain cancers, there are pro-survival proteins that are overexpressed. And these uh, proteins, they have their own family name, and they're called BCL2 proteins. A couple examples of these proteins, there's just more names, is BCL2 and BCL1 cells, BCL1. We were, in this study, we were really focused on MCL1. And these certain, some of these proteins, they create a drug resistance in cancer. of uh, anti-glucomatous proteins, we also see an overproduction of reactive oxygen species. Um, so right now, there's certain treatments in clinical studies that really focus on BCL2 and BCL-L interactions. However, there's not many uh, treatments just for MCL1, and that is due in part because MCL1 really hasn't been studied as much in depth as the other proteins. Um, so our lab previously was looking at BCLI cells, and now we wanted to switch over to MCL1. Uh, okay, so we're, uh, our lab is also very focused on calcium signaling for the cells, and we also wanted to look at the mitochondria because that is where react that's a big source of reactive oxygen species within the cell. So uh, I just made a little picture right here, and this, if you can imagine, this mitochondria. This is the outside of the mitochondria, and here's the inside of the mitochondria. And for ions to pass, get into the mitochondria to do the things that they need to do, they have to travel through certain highly specific channels. Uh, for calcium in this case, it has to travel through uh, the voltage-dependent anion channel and to get into the mitochondria. And from the, from the inside of the mitochondrial membrane, it has to travel through the mitochondrial calcium unicorn, which channel. And once it's inside of the mitochondria, calcium is able to stimulate the electron transport chain. And the electron transport chain's main function is to create ATP and more energy for cellular function. However, a byproduct of, of the ATP and ATP production is reactive oxygen species. Uh, so back to the protein that we were looking at, which was MCL1. A way that MCL1 functions is that it uh, attaches to the VDAC, the voltage-dependent anion channel, to promote a calcium influx into the mitochondria. And so our hypothesis stemmed off of this is that uh, MCL1 is able to increase the amount of reactive oxygen species in cells by interacting with the voltage-dependent anion channel to promote uh, calcium flow into the mitochondria. And so how would we test this hypothesis? Well, there's uh, certain things that we could add to the cells. And one thing that we did was we were able to add a calcium chelator, uh, which just takes away the calcium, and this chemical is called Vata AM. Uh, another thing we did was we stopped the interaction between MCL1 and the voltage-dependent anion channel, and we did this through a peptide that competes with the uh, MCL1 for the bonding spot on VDAC, which was called uh, VDAC N terminal. And then a third thing we tried was that we could just lower the expression of MCL1 through an siRNA approach. And then we could measure the amount of ROS produced in these cells and, and then see how these uh, see how these different additions of chemicals uh, change the amount of ROS. So how did how, how are we able to measure ROS? Well, first I had to go and like connect a lot of cells, a lot of wells of cells, because that was a lot of it. But then after that, we could add uh, this is mitochondrial rho GFP vector. Rho GFP is a redox sensitive green fluorescent protein, and by adding a vector to these cells, it was uh, these cells were able to express the green fluorescent protein. So based on the amount of reactive oxygen species uh, inside these cells, there was a difference in fluorescence. And once there was a fluorescence in these cells, uh, these uh, mitochondrial rho GFP vectors, they were, they were specific to the mitochondria right here. And here you can see a grouping of cells. Uh, here's the nucleus and here's the outline of the cell. Um, the, light, the things that are lighting up are actually the mitochondria. And that's a really, really like, small and clear picture of a cell, and you can see the mitochondria, how they work, so we have a very advanced camera to do this. And so 
once we have these uh, mitochondrial row GFP vectors added to the cells, we then add treatment. <laughs> and, then, and then after we add the treatments, we will measure ROS. And then uh, the difference in, differences in fluorescence will tell us how much ROS is produced in the cells. So for the results, I just have a bar graph right here. Uh, to give you a little information about it, this 415 over 485 ratio, and that's really a calculation. You can replace that with amount of reactive oxygen species found in the cells. And so going off of that, uh, if all, all, all uh, measured uh, as a percent of the control, as you can see control is at 100%. When we added the N-terminal peptide, remember that interrupts the interaction between the voltage-dependent anion channel and an MCL1, we can see a decrease in the amount of ROS produced. Also, we, when we added the calcium chelator, which takes away all the calcium from the cells, uh, the after AM, there was another decrease in the amount of ROS. Going even further, if we were to uh, lower the expression of MCL1 by using uh, siRNA, there's a similar drop in reactive oxygen species. Interestingly though, uh, what we expected when we would add the M-terminal peptide to these MCL1 siRNA cells is that it, there would be no difference because there's no MCL1, so there's nothing to interact with. But there was an increase, and this needs to be researched uh, and when we added BAFTA AM to the MCL1 siRNA, the lower the expression of MCL1 cells, uh, there was no real significant difference in the amount of ROS produced. So what does this all mean for cancer and everything? Well, it gives us a new understanding in how MCL1 works, and it tells us that MCL1, uh, the protein, is able to increase the amount of reactive oxygen species by interacting with the voltage-dependent anion channel to increase calcium flow into the cells. And so studies have shown that uh, cells that are overexpressing MCL1, uh, there's a chemotherapy that targets BCL2 and BCLXL, but if there is an overexpression of MCL1, they, they aren't very effective. So if you uh, attach siRNA, MCL1 siRNA to these cells, then they, there is an increased sensitivity so in, uh, with a further understanding of MCL1, this could lead to new and novel cancer therapies that could sensitize uh, cancers to chemotherapy. Uh, oh, and now acknowledge Okay, so I'd like to thank everyone at Dr. Carl White's lab for all of their outstanding support. Uh, it really helped me with how much everyone just wanted to teach me about biology and whatnot, coming in with little to no biotic biology. Uh, and then I'd like to thank Rosalind Franklin University for allowing me to use their labs. And I'd like to thank Ameri the American Cancer Society for putting this all together and making this really a summer that I will